Hi YouTube, my name is Danica and today I have my top 10 books of 2013. So usually for the Lesbury or for another lesbian book blog event, I do my top lesbian books of the year. So when I was putting together my list for this video, I thought this will be great. I get to include all of the non-lesbian books that I really liked this year. And then as I was making my decisions, I realized that 9 out of 10 of my top 10 books, and those are the top 9, are all still queer books. They were just legitimately the best books I read this year. So I'll go right in, and I am kind of doing this in order. My 10th favorite book slash series this year was A Series of Unfortunate Events. I don't actually have the series with me right now because I borrowed it from the library. I just recorded a full review of the entire series and I'll be putting it up soon and it is extremely long and in-depth so I won't talk too much about it. But basically I really thought this was going to be a series that was going to be really quick and easy and it actually ended up making me think a lot more than I thought I would and it stuck with me which is my main criteria of what books ended up on this list, were the books that actually stayed with me, even if I had read them months and months ago, and made me think. Number nine on my list is Prairie Silence by Melanie Hoffert, and this is a memoir that is about a woman who grew up on the prairies in kind of a rural, not very queer accepting environment, and ended up a lesbian and left the prairies and this is her coming back as an adult trying to reconcile where she grew up with who she is now and I really love this concept of trying to not center queerness in cities. I think there's this narrative of when you are queer and you are growing up in a small town that, that you leave, you have this kind of queer exodus and end up in a big city and that's where all the queer people are and that's where all the accepting community is and I think that is really simplistic and it also means that things aren't going to change if we keep leaving places and I think this was a really good take on the complexities and the writing is really well done. There were some points that I didn't like as much. I have a full review of the Lesbury which I'll link but overall I thought it was a really great concept and one that stuck with me. Next is a book I don't actually have with me because it was a library book and it's Fist of the Spider Woman, Tales of Fear and Queer Desire by Amber Dawn and this is a horror anthology, a queer horror anthology and it was really creepy and really interesting. Again I have a full review at the Lesbray but it really did combine that idea of fear and desire. It goes from this kind of almost erotica place into horror and back again and it's so unsettling and made for such a great October Halloween-y read and it's one that I definitely want to have my own copy of and might end up reading in Octobers to come, just exactly what I was looking for. Next I have a book that I have discussed before on this channel and that's Silhouette of a Sparrow by Molly Beth Griffin which is a lesbian young adult book that's set in 1920s America and the writing is so beautiful and lyrical and just hooked me from the very first couple of sentences. It really addresses some interesting themes and talks about family and about sacrifice, one that I would like to reread again. And then another lesbian young adult book, Starting From Here by Lisa Jen Bigelow. I've talked about this one on this channel as well basically just made me cry so much. I read this in one sitting and I was so attached. I'm a sucker for a dog story and for a lesbian young adult so this really hooked me. And the relationships in this book are so realistic and just really characters that you can relate to and root for even when they're making bad decisions. So this is definitely one of my top lesbian young adult books of all time and another one I'd like to reread. And then another book I borrowed from the library and another October read was The Guild of Stories by Jewel Gomez, which is a lesbian vampire book that was so well done. It's about a black woman 
who is a lesbian and becomes a vampire and her experience throughout the centuries and it really addresses homophobia and also racism in America. It was such a great take on vampire mythology. It incorporated all of these older elements of vampire mythology like the soil that you grew up on and not being able to cross moving water and that sort of thing, as well as these really real life issues of prejudice and of this prejudice that continues over time and just evolves in different ways. She was a slave when she was turned into a vampire and basically it details how that mindset of slavery continues even after slavery is outlawed. It was definitely one that made you think and one I again want to own a physical copy of because I definitely want to come back to that story. Next I have another series and it's a manga series. It is Revolutionary Girl Utena. I think you get the best idea of the realm of the story if you do watch the anime as well and the movie, but all of them individually are also great. It tackles so many different themes, it's got so much metaphor and symbolism, and no matter how many times you watch the anime or read the manga, you're gonna find so many new things. It's kind of almost similar to Sailor Moon, but much more queer and dark and metaphorical. So this is one that I would highly recommend to anyone. And then number three on my list is Nevada by Imogen Binney. This is the advanced reader copy, so that's obviously not the final cover. And this is a trans lesbian story, and it is so good. This publisher, Topside Press, is a new one, and I think I've read all the books they've published so far. Maybe not, but I've read three of the books they published, and they've all been excellent. This one is amazing. It's really bleak. It's kind of post-post-everything. The main character, Maria, is very sarcastic and she kind of is dismissive of things and really questions her own emotions and tries to distance herself from everything. It's not an uplifting book to read, but it's so well done and she feels so real as a character, and even though there were parts of this book I didn't like, it just completely like knocked me flat. This book stunned me. And then my second favorite read of this year is another series, and it is Mark Reads Harry Potter. Mark Ashiro is a blogger who reviews books and movies chapter by chapter or episode by episode, and they are excellent. Mark is amazing. I reread these before I went to LeakyCon and I loved them and then I got this physical copy because I was reading the ebooks and he signed it to me and my roommate and they're just so good. It is basically like being able to read Harry Potter for the first time again and really remember what it's like when you had no idea what was coming and the shock of the new plot twists because it's been like a decade. So this was definitely one of the most enjoyable reads this year. And I really can't wait until his fiction book comes out because I'm sure I'm going to love it. His writing is great. And then my top favorite book of 2013 was another book put out by Topside Press and it's another trans book. It's the collection or edited by Tom Lager and Riley McLeod and it is all trans short fiction, and they are all such high quality, and they cover all sorts of different genres and ideas, and I just loved this book. I loved it. There's lots of lesbian stories, there's lots of non-binary trans stories. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Topside Press is amazing. All of these authors are amazing. It is just incredible because I've read a lot of lesbian anthologies that kind of, I feel like, rest on their laurels a little bit because they know that because there's not a lot to choose from, you will read a lesbian anthology even if there are some really weak stories in there. And this is pretty much like the first collection of trans short stories and it could have done that, but 
all of these stories are incredible and it set the bar so high. So this was my favorite read of 2013. And that's all of my top 10 books of 2013. It was difficult to narrow them down. I read 100 books this year. I gave 7 of them 5 stars on Goodreads, 40 of them 4 stars, and then the rest were 3 stars or lower. But that's still a lot to choose from. And for context, I read lots of great stuff this year, and these ones beat out The Book Thief, Orcs and Craig, Insurgent and Allegiant, and On the French Kiss. Lots of booktube favorites, but I thought these ones were even better. Those seven books that I rated five stars, five of them were Mark Reed's Harry Potter, one of them was Utana, one of them was The Collection, so my context for those ones just completely blowing me away. Thanks for watching and let me know what your favorite reads of 2013 were. If you have a wrap-up video please link it below and I'll definitely watch it. Thanks again! Bye!